Hello. So, uh, so once again, this is uh, the first, no, the fifth uh, video of um, a process that I'm doing over here. I'm redoing a project. Uh, just so let's recap. So, yeah, I'm redoing a, uh, a project that I did five years ago where we work with some prioritization for a set of species in Mexico State. Uh, to, in order to achieve this, uh, this prioritization, we use uh, 94 species and we use uh, environmental, climatic or bioclimatic information like precipitation, mean temperature, and way more. And we also use land use. Both of those environmental um, information, we have them for past, current, and future. That was 1979, 2010, and for 2030. Obviously, uh, a lot of this information, uh, I would assume it can be updated, but the idea here is to focus on the methodology. Like this is what you can actually do, right? You can, I'm going to try to have somehow the, the script available eventually. Um, but this is something that someone can do, and I think that it was a pretty nice uh, procedure to do. And so, yeah. Anyway, last video I did the variable selection, which was uh, which was through a package named GL Multi, which is a general linear model, in which we use those environmental information. Uh, and the, the amount of species. Here, this is just as an old slide. So you see, it's like 94. Here, for this, for this occasion, for this whole process or exercise, I will be using only the amphibians, which was eight, uh, 10 species, right? And the cool thing about, uh, one of the cool things about this um, was that through this, we were able to work with a specific set of information for each one of the species. Uh, as usually, this is uh, this modeling species and kind of stuff is usually like like all in shotgun or through a very specific revision of literature that some people select each one of uh, each one of those. Right here, we are using the data and the data is speaking itself. GL Multi basically what it does is it tells us which of the environmental information is the most informative according to the to the um, uh, recorded or the occurrences of each one of the species. So that's in the past video. If you want to go and see it, please do. Uh, so today we'll go through um, through the actual model, right? Now, this uh, one last thing regarding the, the, the progress of the last video, I just made sure that uh, the whole thing was running. And this is the file that we will end up producing. And uh, so, yeah, so it's like each one of these lines represent each one of the species and each one of these columns represents each one of the variables or environmental information. And I think I made a mistake in the past video because I said that, uh, at that point we eliminate altitude, uh, but that's not the case. V1 here it's the altitude, which uh, we will keep eliminating uh, in the in the script uh, for, for the modeling uh, part. And this is because we are interested in things that change in the short time, right? And topography doesn't change in 20 or 30 years. So that was basically the reason. It makes sense if everything was done on current time. Yeah, but because we are working in the in the in, in the time series kind of thing and the, the changes of things it doesn't make sense here but anyway so here here's the file here's the file and this just was like successful on the path the, the, the product from uh, the past video now on to this guy so another thing that i wanted to touch about here is the fact that i had a lot of issues trying to install uh, the package via mode I really don't know what happened specifically, uh, but we, we need to be aware of that these things can happen that for some reason suddenly either our or our studio. Um, and 
it might have some issues and we don't know exactly what uh, what can what can possibly be going on over here so here for everybody to understand i will try to link this video on the in the, in the description because it, it, this was a solution after reading a bunch of stark overflows and that kind of thing it was incredibly way more easy than i thought right so first we need to be aware that the type of error that i was having is like uh, like this in, in, in pink purple whatever uh, our tools is required to build our packages la -da -la -la, right so here this guy shows us that it's basically two lines that we need yeah so first we need to run this guy this line uh, changing the options for the repository and then we need to install the shining uh, package yeah so basically that's how it was possible to do so i will link this video okay uh, and the second thing that we need to be very aware of is that because we will be working with um, multiple algorithms there is one in the specific that we need to have the physical the physical um, files in the folder that we are working with and that's max sent what do i mean with that this so this is the file the folder where i'm using all my information right where i have my variables where i have um uh, the the working space right and these two files, we need to have the installation files for MaxSend. We need to remember, if you didn't know, MaxSend is an, a predicting, is as a species distribution modeling software, right? It, it, this is how it looks like. But in R, we're not going to be using it like that, obviously. But we need to have it over here for some reason, because um, it's, it's, I, I guess it's more complex or whatever, but we need to have it there. So, let's now come over here so this is the bunch of packages that i had to install because sometimes i need a package for another package uh, and then we i have this which i might leave it in uh in steel because i mean while i am using right now the global environment from the gl multi run um it's also useful to just if someone wants to jump in if i already have like all the files necessary right if you want to jump in you need to read your tables and this is how we do it but right now thankfully we are not trying to complicate ourselves and uh, here if we start here uh well first of all i need to correct something here mm -hmm. Boom. And boom yeah because uh that space that i was having over there uh, a moment ago it gave me issues because you cannot have those uh, that, that, that in all space it needs to be exactly the same. so the first part of the script that i have it's very similar to the one in gl multi where i'm just formatting the information i'm bringing which of the species which which species i want to work with, with the occurrences the id of the grid and match uh, with the environmental information right and that is going to be fed now into the sets, uh, the, the, the mini sets from Biomo. I will not go very deep into what they mean because I really was a mirror of copy paste as a very good, um, I don't know if I can say this is a programmer kind of thing, but, but anyway, I have someone who works with this kind of language, copy paste is the, 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 the the most used thing, I guess. We just need to uh, replace some of the things. So I will just go ahead and tell you like, here, for example, here, this is to start feeding my data in a way the package by a mode can actually read it. So usually the kind of things that you will need to change here is this kind of names, right? Variables, because this is our uh, data. So this is the first step for IMO to start formatting the information. Here we actually format it. Yeah, it's a good thing. Yeah. Uh, the only setting that I that I modify is here is this one, which is uh, pretty important. Uh, we are we we need to have some kind of balancing. Uh, uh, 
balancing the, the, the presence of the species, right? So the recommended or for modeling is uh, the pseudo absences, right? Because an absence is that we actually record absence of the species, right? because we are not able to do that. We use pseudo absences. The recommended number is that one, 10,000. And the way that you're going to distribute them is randomly across the whole space. And followed by that, we go into the modeling options. And here's where we have the eight models that we'll be using. Right? Here we need to specify the models that we want to use. You don't need to use eight, but this is this what I have understood. Uh, um, these are like the common set. Uh, each one of these guys have its uh, pros and cons, right? And we will be running them 10 times. Um, some people, I think, run them like 50 and blah, 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 uh, huge numbers, right? But because we were working already with a heavy set and we were already having a lot of issues, uh, we decided to go with 10 runs. I, I don't know if this is the minimum. I don't think this was the minimum, but close to. Uh, followed by the evaluation method to ensure that our results have some kind of significance, which was the TSS. And so those are the only settings that I modify over here. Maybe I will try to go a little bit deeper into explaining this kind of stuff, but I am pretty sure if you look for Townsend Peterson, um, Angela Cuervo from, from Mexico, you can find uh, this kind of discussion more in deep, like the roots of the theory, right? And finally, how these guys will be assembled, right? So, because we are going to have eight models per run, we need to have one single product at the end. So basically it's going to use by the average of the TSS information. So it will take, it will bring the most significant, um, the most significant uh, models or and that we will average them. Right? And at the end, we will just have a repository for each individual uh, model for each one of the algorithms, and we'll have our assembly. So that's it. This is the whole, uh, the whole enchilada. Like, I hate that saying, why did I just say that? But anyway, I just said it. So once we have set up everything up, the only thing that we need to do is to run it. And so a moment ago it was running. Let's hope nothing has changed and let's hope for the best results. So here it goes. And boom, here, there we go. Yes, is it doing it? Yeah, it seems that it's doing it. Uh, so yeah. This is great. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to stay here. Uh, I will cut the video in a moment because this is going to take maybe easy, like one day. I remember that uh, this poor baby that I use here is a laptop, like seven year old laptop. I remember at that time I had to leave it like two days on, yeah, running. Because this is like a 10 set. Um, I do remember that for birds, we had 40 birds. So it was crazy. But anyway, so uh cool thing that is running for the next video i will go ahead and show the results and try to explore a little bit of that and after that we will we will um uh, we will move forward into what kind of analysis that i was using and um Oh, and, and, and just like a verification of the results and then just with sonation sonation is the one that actually does the prioritization so we're close uh, no we're not close to, to the to the finish but we are close to the final product and just one last thing uh so as you see here is is it's right now it's working with this species and this specific set of uh variables so yeah everything is fine so thank you uh once again it's great that this is uh, working and it's not giving me any more problems and uh have a great day, night, evening, in case I don't see you. Bye-bye.